Jared Poland Fronos Photo dot com and this is your you are capable of amazing things photo news fix this fix is brought to you by helix sleep we all do it we all need to sleep and some of us get crappier sleep because our mattress just sucks so why not check out helix who makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs so how do you pick the right helix mattress simple head on over to helixsleep.com fro to take the sleep quiz and in 30 seconds you'll know exactly which mattress will be the right one for you i mean i took the quiz height six five weight 220. Yeah, I look a lot shorter in person, but I'm still ripped. Recently, Steven's wife banished him to the guest bedroom where an old crappy mattress presented a horrible night's sleep for him. Well, Steven said, never again. Took the sleep quiz, matched with the Helix Dusk Lux with cooling top, and a few days later, bam, this box showed up at his door. In no time, Steven had his new bed up and ready to go. The good news is, all Helix Sleep mattresses ship free in the U.S. and come with a 100-night sleep trial and a 10-year warranty. So if your sleep's been sucking, it's time to head on over to helixsleep.com fro, where you can save up to $200 and get two free pillows. First up, the head of Instagram once again signaled that video is the future of Instagram and not photos. In a recent video released by Adam Masseri, he addressed a few things we're working on to make Instagram a better experience. First, he starts off by addressing some users seeing a new full screen version of their feed. Now this has rolled out only to a small fraction of the community and is supposed to make viewing photos and videos a more fun and engaging experience, AKA they just wanna make more money by sucking you into the algorithm. They f it with the cell phones. But he goes on to say it's not good enough yet, so it won't roll out to everyone until it is. The second thing I'm hearing are a lot of concerns about photos and how we're shifting to video. Now I want to be clear, we're going to continue to support photos. It's part of our heritage. That said, I need to be honest. I do believe that more and more of Instagram is going to become video over time. That's basically your answer right there. They don't care about photos. That was harsh. On top of that, he says that more and more people are engaging with videos over photos. That's shifting more and more to videos over time. But hey, if you're gonna prioritize videos probably 10 times more than photos, it would only make sense that of course more people are commenting and engaging and sharing videos because that's all you're showing them. If you look at what people like and consume and view on Instagram, that's also shifting more and more to video over time. This was just a dumb statement. They clearly don't care about photos anymore as they attempt to counter or whatever TikTok is doing. Now there's currently a movement going around Instagram where people are posting an image that says, make Instagram Instagram again and stop trying to be TikTok. But I won't be posting that. I won't be posting that because it is what it is. Instagram needs to evolve to survive whether we like the changes or not. It's still our choice to be there or not be there as it's a free service that we don't pay for and they honestly don't pay us at all except they, they use us to become really big but hey, that's modern business. What do you think? Before I continue on with the news stories. Oh shit, what? Did you know that Steven and I have a podcast? What about that? You know, it's called Raw Talk, where we talk, well, raw about photography. We release new episodes first things on Friday mornings, wherever you get your podcasts. Just search out Frono's Photo Podcast and look for this graphic because that will tell you that it's a raw talk. Or you could head on over to fronosphoto.com slash podcast to check out all of the last episodes because we've done eight new ones in the last eight weeks. Next up, Canon silently drops firmware updates for not one, one not two, but three cameras. I say silently because they didn't even drop us a press release or give us a briefing. Silent, but deadly. All I got was a call from Roberta L who was on her honeymoon, but I honestly think that it was a butt dial. Hello? <laughs> Okay. Nonetheless, Canon has updated the firmware for the R3, R5, and R6. And let's start with the firmware 1.6.0 for the R6, which, well, doesn't change very much. It has the ability to convert multiple heef images into multiple JPEG images. whoop de doo Enhances movie digital IS and fixes minor issues. Moving on to 1.6.0 for the R5, which adds the same three things I just mentioned, as well as one major, major update. This next statement is directly from the 
press release, and I quote, adds auto power off temp standard high to the menu for movie recording. When high is selected, the camera will not automatically turn off when the temperature of the camera body and card become high, because I got high, which may allow for longer movie recordings than before, depending on the shooting conditions. Note that the temperature of the bottom surface of the camera may increase at this time. That's for my undercarriage. Okay. People are sharing reports that they've been able to record for over two hours in 4K HQ, which if you recall was not possible when the camera was released. When it first came out, you started to hit a heat limit around 20 or 30 minutes, but with each subsequent firmware update, the overheating's become less and less. So how did they fix it? Did they simply tell the camera to ignore the heat and keep recording? Or did they run a billion and one test to determine that the camera can handle the heat without damaging anything? We will probably still continue to use our EOS FANs in the studio to continue to keep the back of our cameras cool, even though we probably don't need to at this point because of this new firmware update. Hey Dan, do one of those story transition things right here for me. Thank you. And finally, let's talk about the R3 firmware. Yes, another Canon story, but what the R3 added is kind of insane and needed to be on its own. Quite important. In fact, I made a dedicated video about it on Monday, which you should definitely check out after the fix. Not now, but after. Let me jump in here to say, since recording photo news fix and telling you all about the firmware update for the R3, Canon has officially pulled the firmware 1.2.0 for the R3. Well, that sucks. Now, at the time of me recording this now, they couldn't give me any further information on why, other than saying that it will be put up again soon. When will then be now? Now, we did pull something out of the UK, at least it was on a forum or in a comment section, where they said that CPS in Europe said that if you reset the camera after putting the firmware on there, you will lose access to the mode dial and it will not work. I don't know why you gone and done messed up Canon again with a firmware where you done messed up. Hopefully that's the only issue and hopefully they get it fixed soon and put the firmware back up for people. But in the meantime, do not reset your camera because you might lose the mode dial, which I could actually test out, but I'm not going to. Don't tease me. Now let's get back to the video. There were actually 15 different updates to the R3, but I wanted to focus on one, the ability to shoot raw photos at up to 195 frames per second in a burst of 50. Now I know that sounds a little confusing, but it's not. You can shoot a burst of 50 frames at the equivalent of 195 frames per second in a quarter of a second or 0.26 of a second to be exact. This is what it sounds like, you ready? I don't get it. Now here, let's do some math to help you understand. Say you have one quarter, and that quarter equals 50 raw photos, and you find three more quarters, which equals 50 photos each. Duh. Those four quarters add up to 200 raw photos in one second. Get it now? I, I still don't get it. Now I tested this feature out at the Phillies game and was able to nail a first pitch fastball home run, a batter ducking out of the way of a high and inside pitch, as well as a few bursts of pitchers from different angles. Now is this a feature you you would use all the time? No, because there's some caveats. One is that you lose autofocus tracking as soon as you fully press the shutter down to take the picture, which means if the subject is coming towards you, you're going to lose their focus. Two, you lose metering, which honestly doesn't matter since you're already locked in with your manual exposure anyway. And three, it takes nine seconds for those raw files to clear the buffer, rendering your camera locked up during that time. But even with those caveats, you're getting a burst of 50 freaking raw files in a quarter of a second. Sure, you could shoot JPEG bursts as well, but it still takes nine seconds to write those files to your cards. Nine! Ah, ah, now with ah. all that being said, you can shoot up to 195 frames per second, meaning you can set how many frames per second you want to shoot in increments between 30 and 195, and even dial in how many frames it will capture up to 50. This may not be useful for everyone and it may not even be useful for me in most situations, but this to me is a sign of what the future of photography will look like. Bursts will get longer, write speeds will get shorter, and will need to adapt to the new technology. There you have it, that's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'll leave it. Jared, PolinFronosPhoto.com. See ya.